Hey friends, I am so excited for you to do this lab activity because we're studying evolution and what better way to learn about evolution to then actually be able to see where it happened at the DNA level. Yes, we're diving into the wonderful world of molecular evolution and I hope you end up finding it as cool as I do. Now, this lab activity assumes that you've already taken first semester biology and learned about DNA and protein synthesis. Uh, if you haven't, don't worry, all is not lost. I have some uh, lectures on my YouTube channel where I talk about DNA and protein synthesis. So you may need to watch those to get a basic background or you can just watch here. So anyway, um, I'm so excited. We're gonna be using a software that is free and it's used by people all over the world, whether you are a member of the general public or you're a student, a professor, or a big wig scientific researcher, we all use this program to study genetics and evolutionary change. And this program is called MEGA, which stands for Molecular Evolutionary Genetics Analysis. And it's free, and we're gonna learn how to download it, and then we're gonna be using it to track the evolution of a gene. Um, so, you know, if evolutionary theory is correct, this says that all the genes that we have either came to humans as a mutation or we inherited them from a common ancestor. And if the latter is true, then we should be able to see that same gene present in other living species and be able to see where mutations happened. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take an example gene today, the breast cancer gene, BRCA2, and we're going to put it through this software and actually pull down a DNA sequence from humans for it and use the software to also look up the DNA sequences for that gene for a bunch of other species. And based on that, we can draw an evolutionary tree called a phylogenetic tree showing the evolution of this gene. And trust me, once you get hooked to it, you're gonna tell your friends about this at parties. I mean, you're gonna be the life of the party talking about tracking the evolution of a gene using mega. Okay, well, maybe not that far, but you're gonna find it very interesting and you're gonna to wanna to pick a whole bunch of genes to try to make evolutionary trees of. So uh, let's get started. I'm going to show you how to download the software onto your computer, and then we're gonna take an example with the breast cancer gene. You ready? Let's go. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is go to Google, and this will allow us to gain access to the mega website. So I'm going to go on Google, and I'm gonna type in its full name, molecular, evolutionary genetics analysis. And you'll see down here, it says mega, megasoftware.net. So that's the website. I'm gonna call that up and it brings you to this. Now, the mega company is constantly updating their website every couple months, so I'm trying to uh, keep up with it. Um, but keep in mind that this, if you watch this uh, sometime after this video was recorded, this, the interface may have changed, but all the information's there. And they're constantly coming out with new versions. So currently, we are at Mega 7 at the time of this recording. Um, that means that they've worked out a bunch of glitches over time. So Mega 7 is good. Now you have to determine which version you need. So depending on your computer, um, I have a Mac, so I'm going to be downloading this one. If you have a PC, use Windows. You'll just go to Windows here. But I have a Mac, so I'm going to stick with that. Should say Graphical and Mega 7. And then you're going to click Download and it'll bring you to this page. And you can read all this information, and what it wants is for you to enter some uh, information about yourself. This helps them get their grant funding. So please uh, fill this in, you won't be able to download it otherwise. So I'm just gonna put, you know, I'm a professor, you'd put student, um, it's a university college, you can put in the name of your institution, and an email address has to be a valid email address. Once you've done that, click download and it will download onto your computer. Um, and so where it downloads to depends on how you have your computer configured. It may be in a folder called program files, downloads, maybe you load it at your desktop, however you have set it. It'll take a few minutes, it's several megabytes long, but once it's done, um, in the case of apps, I'm gonna open up my app window here and there it is, Mega 7. So I'm gonna click it and op, up is going to pop the main window for Mega. And if you can't find it, it probably is stuck behind some other window. And if you can't find it, it's probably stuck behind some other window, so you may have to move some windows around to find it. 
So here it is. This is what you're looking for. This little window right here. It's kind of a light blue. Um, it has a lot of different features on it. Uh, for this lab activity, we're just going to be doing some basic features, but I encourage you to go on YouTube, get some books, take a class um, to learn more about this program. But what we're going to be interested in doing is going to this one that says align, pull down that thing right there, that little window, and you want to go down to where it says query databanks. So everybody do that. You can pause the video, go to query databanks. Okay, so once you've gone to Query Databanks, up pops another website, and this is called the NCBI website. The NCBI website is amazing. It does so much stuff. I mean, I can't even begin to get into what is located on this site, but this is put out by NIH, the National Institutes of Health. So it's a governmental website, and uh, we're going to be interested in looking into its area called nucleotide. So if yours doesn't already say nucleotide, Click that little window and scroll down until you get to nucleotide. I'm going to go ahead and blow up this window. I'm going to have to blow up my little screen here so that you can see that. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to enter the name of the species that we're interested in um, seeing where, where this gene evolved in that particular species and the name of the gene. So I'm interested in seeing how the breast cancer gene evolved in our ancestors and where it's present in other living species today. So since I'm dealing with a human gene, I'm going to put the species name of the human. So um, our name is Homo, capital H-O-M-O, -O, sapiens, with a lower S. So it's really important you spell the name of the species correctly. If you don't spell it correctly, um, it's going to change the result you get in the in the study. So Homo sapiens and then the name of the gene. So for our example, we're doing the breast cancer susceptibility gene, which is called BRCA2. So we're going to start off with the breast cancer gene. Uh, once you've mastered the techniques using that gene, um, I encourage you to go and find your own gene. Maybe you're interested in the gene for diabetes or the gene for colorblindness or whatever it is. Um, at the end of this, I'll show you how you can go find out what the name of those genes are and do a, do a mega analysis on that. So I've hit Homo sapiens BRCA2. I'm going to click on search. So what this is doing is it's pulling up the DNA sequence for the human breast cancer gene as it's been entered by multiple labs, genetics labs around the world. So what a genetics lab will do is they take a DNA sample from a human, they um, do biotechnology and find out the actual ATCG DNA sequence using something called a, a DNA sequencer. And once they have that, they load it up onto this website. And so You'll actually, as you scroll down, you see that there's many entries for this. These represent, um, each entry represents the work done by a different genetics lab somewhere in the world. So you just want to click on one of these, and we're looking for one that is good in size, like this first one says uh, 10,987 BP. That means almost 11,000 base pairs long is the amount of the gene that they sequenced. So remember, a base pair is um, has to do with the DNA. So a for adenine always pairs with T for thymine. C for cytosine, cytosine pairs with G for guanine. So those pairs, they've sequenced 11,000 of those and put this up onto this website. So you want to make sure the name is the same. So human breast cancer gene, BRCA2. And we're looking for something that says complete CDS. That means coding sequence. So here's where you're going to have to think back to protein synthesis. Remember, the DNA serves as the template for messenger RNA, mRNA, and that mRNA has codons, little triplets of bases that code for amino acids which create proteins. And so um, you want to make sure this says mRNA complete CDS because that means the messenger RNA and specifically the coding region that will actually make the amino acids and the proteins. Um, remember that there's evolutionary junk that gets spliced out during transcription before translation. So again, if this is like, whoosh, just go back and watch my protein synthesis lecture on my YouTube channel. All right, so what we're going to do is click on this, and it's going to pull up some information about who did this work. So information about, you know, the authors from the genetics lab that sequenced this gene. And if you scroll down, you'll see a bunch of capital letters here. Each one of these is an abbreviation for a different one of those 20 amino acids. 
And if you keep scrolling down, you see the actual DNA sequence for this gene. So, I mean, you know, G is guanine, T thymine, C cytosine, so et cetera. And I mean, you'll see this whole thing they sequenced here. Whoa, there's a lot of it. Oh my gosh, that's so big. And that, just having that, which is really only a little bit different than the normal version of the gene, you know, makes you more susceptible to breast cancer. So anyway, just take a look at that. Once you've taken a look at that, go over here to FASTA and click it. So we're gonna click FASTA. And this is going to call up for us the actual DNA sequence here. Okay, so once you've taken a look at that, uh, we can go back and actually click the FASTA sequence. So I'm gonna go back here um, and click FASTA. You can also do it from within that page that we were looking at. So uh, once you've clicked on FASTA, so once you've had a chance to look at that, Go back up to the top and click on FASTA. And um, sometimes in these Macs, it has little glitches and you have to kind of just keep doing it and open it in a new window. But, you know, again, be patient. There's glitches sometimes, especially on Macs. Anyway, once you click on FASTA, you'll see the actual um, DNA sequence here. And what it's actually doing here is just showing you one side of the DNA strand. So remember, it's a double helix. It's just showing you one side. And what we're going to do is we're going to take part of this DNA sequence and we're going to do something called a blast run. We're going to blast that DNA sequence against all the other DNA sequences in this database. We're talking millions of DNA sequences. We're going to be blasting them, which means that it's going to compare this DNA sequence from a human to DNA sequences from all sorts of species um, that have been sequenced by different genetics labs. So what we're going to do is copy part of this gene. We don't want to do all 10,900 something base pairs because it's just going to make the analysis really slow. If you want to, you can. It's just going to take a long time, like hours. So we're going to take uh, just a little part of this. And this is real scientific. Take this much, <laughs> this much, about a full paragraph size of these bases, and we're going to copy those. So we're just going to take our cursor, go to the first base, so don't, include that stuff. Go to this first base, in this case it's a G, and select over, you know, about that much, a little more or less, you know. It doesn't really matter. You don't want it too small, but you don't want it too big either. In fact, I'm going to I'm gonna pull my, my little screen down here a little bit so I can show you a little more. So I'm going to copy, make sure you get that first base. I'm going to copy about that much, okay? Um, so if you're using Windows, you can go up to Edit and hit Copy or hit uh, Control-C to copy. Um, in a Mac, you can either go up to Edit and Copy or hit Command-C. So I'm using a Mac, so I'm going to, actually, I'm just going to go to Edit and Copy. Okay, so I've copied it, and now we're going to go over to where it says Run Blast. So we're going to click on that, and that brings us to this page right here.